This is episode number six, the final episode showing how to create a nature scene like the example and congratulations on making it this far if you are watching this and this is the last one and we're going to go over texturing and then you can render out something beautiful and be done and show it to the world. If you click on the terrain, what you'll notice is this create material option. And if you actually go ahead and click create material, you'll notice that it makes this default TF terrain material. And it uses a terrain operator shader. So you might be wondering, well, what if I'm working in something else like Redshift? and I don't want to use the default material, I want to be able to do this inside of Redshift. Well, you can. In our Redshift shader graph, I'm going to show you how to make sure that your Redshift Terraform Terrain material is working inside of Redshift. So the first thing you'll notice is that I just have pretty much a default Redshift material node in here. You can add some roughness to it if you want. I'll go in here and open up C4D and we'll find the C4D shader. This is a really powerful thing because it allows you to have access to all of the different shaders that exist within Cinema 4D's default materials. So this means that including your plugins that go to your Cinema 4D default materials, you have access to them. So if you go under shader and go down to plugins, you'll see Insidium and you can choose the terrain operator shader. So now you have access to this within your file. And in order to have the Cinema 4D shader work, we need to pipe this into a texture node. So I'll Go ahead and grab a texture node, drag it in here, and I will connect these, and this will be the texture. And now we need to connect the Redshift texture node to our diffuse color. And you may think, well, I've done it right, that's the last step. Well, we're close, but we're not totally there because although we have a Cinema 4D shader node, it isn't really, it isn't mapping correctly on the material. Um, and we also have these default mountainous colors coming in that we don't really need. So I'm going to take those out for right now, but I'll show you an example. So I'm going to hide this. I have um, only the Terraform Terrain and Dome Light shown with um, the Viewport Solo, so I have these two. Soloed and I also have the, the um, Redshift material we made and it's, it's on the Terraform terrain, but you'll notice that if we hit render inside of the Redshift render view, our texture is mapped completely wrong. It's going horizontal and it should be following the height of that terrain. So there's a, an easy fix for this. If we go back into Cinema 4D's Redshift shader graph, we are not linking this to anything. So we have the shader and it's all good, except that it's not linked correctly. So grab this little dropper tool and click on Terraform Terrain and it'll grab the data from that. And now that we've grabbed the data from the Terraform Terrain, if we move this out of the way, it is mapping correctly and we can even check this out in the redshift render view.
we'll hit play. And there you have it. That is mapping correctly. So that's the first part of this is how to have your terrain map correctly. And again, this is the setup. It's pretty simple. If you want to add more detail to your redshift material, um, you can. You can add in all different types of things as you would with any other redshift material. Affecting reflection, you can add in reflection maps and anything else you can imagine. So you can still get pretty creative in here, but that's how you get the base diffuse color to show up. And of course you can always add more complexity to this as you wish. And something else that I wanted to point out to you is that it was really easy to make the water texture. What I did for that is I actually just used the default water and it's very simple. You'll have the correct IOR that's for water. And it's, it's actually a pretty simple setup in terms of that. The one thing that I did do a little bit different is that I added a plane underneath the water so that that would be the color reflected in the water. When I've seen ponds before, they have algae and other types of things growing in them, so they look a little bit more green. So I wanted to have that green look of the water. So what I actually did was I put a plane underneath the water and I added a green material to it so that I could get those kind of, um, have that greenish pond water look to it that seemed more realistic than it looking pristine um, in this situation it, it wouldn't be so pristine and clear looking for the grass if you want to know how to um, texture the grass material you can, if you go under object and you go down to materials, you need to click materials. You can't have geometry or generation selected. You need to have materials selected. You can drag a material selection into here. So I used this for the um, tall grass, the tall prairie cord grass here. And I noticed that cord grass is, a, or grass in general, it tends to be more yellow um, at the bottom and then more green at the top. If I open this up, you'll see what I did. So it's a similar process. I used the C4D shader. It's extremely powerful. And if we click this down arrow here, you'll see that I chose to create a gradient. So under shader, I loaded in gradient and I added in a yellow knot and a green knot. You can change the color by double clicking on these. And I chose to have this gradient be 2D in the V direction. But you have some different options. But in this case, this is what would work for the grass. And I didn't want it to look too smooth and perfect. So what I did was I added some turbulence to it, 20%. And you can choose the amount of octaves. That's the amount of detail in your turbulence. And you can even choose the scale of your turbulence. And there's some other options here. But that's basically how I created that green texture. So as before, you just link the C4D shader node to the Redshift texture node, and that allows this to be plugged into the Redshift material diffuse color. And then you can choose the amount of roughness you would like for that material. And then this can all be plugged into your output. And in terms of mapping this, 
And there are controls down here. So I chose a frontal projection. Texture is being projected onto the materials from the front. You can offset in the V direction, and then you can see this is kind of messing up our texture, but that's that's an option of how to move your texture around. So I just want to show you as a reference. I'm going to hit undo. You can do that for the U direction too, which is just going the other way. Um, and you can choose how much this tiles, how stretched out it is. So you can choose your number of tiles. You can adjust the length if you'd like, which are these sliders here. And that pretty much wraps up how you can texture your grass. And there's some more options. For the old grass, I actually used a more brownish color because I thought this looked more realistic. Nature's always changing, but at the time of year I was looking at this grass, the older grass from the previous season was a more goldeny brown color, and I just gave it the solid golden color. But again, if you'd like, you can you can pick a couple different shades. I guess I did actually at this time choose two different shades and add some turbulence. It's very subtle though, so it looks like it's a solid color even though it's not. When it comes to texturing the tree, there's a few different ways to do it. There's more options actually to texture the two plant um, from Mateo. Under selections, you'll see if you're used to adding materials with selections, if you click on these, you can just add selection tags for each one of these options and add materials that way by dragging the material to the selection tag. So you'll see that the name correlates with the selection. We didn't actually even use all of these because we didn't make flowers, so we don't have things such as petals or stamen. But we do have branches, so that that is one way to texture these. It'd be similar to texturing another object if you chose to use selections. And you can definitely do it from there. You can also texture this similar to how we textured the grass, which was what I had done, where you can go into your plant layers, and instead of being on main, we'll change this to materials. And you'll see that we have different materials applied to different layers within this um, plant. So for the leaves, I made a, a green texture. The branches, I made another gradient texture because I saw a willow tree and it had a more yellowy gradient to its branches. So I definitely suggest looking at nature and gathering inspiration from it and seeing how it works. Um, I borrowed a bark texture from Insidium. It came with a bark texture. I just converted it to Redshift. So if you're wondering how to convert materials to Redshift, you can do this under Tools, Materials, Tools, Convert All Materials, or Convert and Replace Materials. If you just select Convert All Materials, you'll keep your old textures as well as getting a new Redshift version. If you select Convert and Replace All Materials, all of the old textures will be replaced with Redshift textures, or Redshift materials, excuse me. So that is an option. And that's basically how to texture. If you've watched all of the episodes and made your own, nature scene 
well, congratulations, because that was a lot of work, and you should feel really proud of yourself. I know, because I did it, and it was a lot of work. And I'd love to see what you made, so you can find me on Instagram, and you can tag me in your art if you'd like me to see what you made with the tutorials. I'd love to see it. It would be lovely. And I really hope you enjoyed all of this. Teo is such a fun tool, and so is Terraform FX. And there's so much more that we could do in depth on each one of these tools. But I think this is a really good base to build off of for your own projects, whatever you're working on. And it's been lovely. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And... Render out something beautiful and enjoy it.